My brothers and sisters, it's good to have this opportunity to be with you today. But we come together in very troubling times. And our readings today, the first reading, the second reading, the Psalm and the Gospel, point us toward a deep understanding of how fear is our common enemy. Because fear prevents us from having open hearts, prevents us from being vulnerable, and therefore prevents us from offering God's love. We're living at a time where we have had two months of being quarantined under a global pandemic, a kind of unnatural situation for the sake of public health, unnatural in the sense that we as human beings are social creatures and we need each other. We need contact, we need touch, and we need sociability. And yet, many of us have been deprived of that for an extended period of time. And this has brought frustration and tension in our society and around the world. But this has been compounded by an economic crisis, which continues to loom and grow in its seriousness. And that, too, is a global experience. An economic crisis because people have been un unable to earn a living or open their buildings, their, their businesses, leading to economic stress and anxiety and concern for the future. And then those tensions have further brought old and festering wounds that have not been fully healed to the forefront, racial tensions, the abuse of power, and the overall divisions and tribalism within our society that lead us to separate into groups of those who are with us and those we perceive who are against us, those who agree with us, and those who we consider to be beyond the pale because they don't share our views, our perspectives, or our social or political agenda. So these are troubling times. And they are times that are filled with danger. And they are times that are potentially explosive. But in the book of Deuteronomy, we hear the word of God addressing difficult times as well. As the Hebrews were brought forth out of captivity into Egypt, which for us as Christians becomes a kind of type, a representation of our delivery from the bondage of sin into the salvation of the Lord. But between that point of deliverance and the point of captivity, there are the years of wandering in the desert. In the book of Deuteronomy, we're reminded, do not forget the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that place of slavery and who guided you through the vast and terrible desert with its seraph serpents, its scorpions, its parched land, and its waterless ground. A period of despair. A period where we're tempted to feel futility and hopelessness, and we see no signs of relief. But there is that promise of hope, grounded in faith and in love, 
that we also hear in the words in the book of Deuteronomy. This God, whom you are not to forget, who brought you out of bondage, brought forth water for you from the flinty rock and fed you in the desert with manna, a food unknown to your fathers. It is the midst, in the midst of the desert of fear, of anxiety, of hopelessness, of futility, that God comes forth and offers us his body and blood and offers us a way forward and a way out of the trap and the bondage and the captivity of despair. God directed the journey of the Hebrews to the desert. God led them out of bondage and captivity and God fed them with manna, the likes of which their fathers had not known because this manna came from God himself. It came down from heaven. And so fear is our common enemy and fear prevents us from being open and vulnerable and giving love. And there are three lessons that we can take away today that can help to see us through these times. The first lesson is a tale of two parishes. Before I entered seminary to discern a calling for the priesthood, I worked for the diocese as a consultant on churches that were merging and churches that were likely to be closed. And what we would do is we would go into these parishes and we would interview priests and parishioners and anyone who had been involved in the church and frequently people who had stopped attending to get a picture of what was going on in those parishes, what those parishes' strengths were and how we could build on those strengths in newly merged parishes. And in one particular neighborhood, there were two churches we went to the first one and began our interview. And the member of pastoral council told us, oh, you know, the neighborhood is changing. It's not what it was. And there are these Somali, Bantu Somali refugees, and they're Muslim. They aren't Catholic, and we're afraid of them. And then there are the blacks who have moved in, and they're Protestant. And we're afraid of them. And then there are others in the community, people who are living together, who aren't married, who don't have any need for religion, so they believe in their lives. And we're afraid of them. And we used to hold our parish picnic out in our yard, the yard of our church but now we hold it in our basement. We went to the next parish and did our interview. Met with the head of pastoral council and she said, oh, you know, the neighborhood's changing. It's not what it was. The Somali Bantu have moved in and they're Muslim. And the blacks have moved in and they're Protestant. And others have moved in who do not affiliate with any religion at all and who don't believe in religion and they're hostile towards the life of faith. We used to hold our parish picnic in our yard, but now we've moved it to the park right in the center of our neighborhood so that all may come and all may experience the love of Christ and witness the presence of God in their lives. We aren't closed to anybody. This is the spirit that our church must represent. 
this is the spirit that we must be willing to bring to people. And does that mean taking risks? Yes, it does. Does it mean overcoming fear? Absolutely. But the Hebrews who were wandering in the wilderness of the desert for 40 years faced similar fears and similar reasons to feel discouraged, and that did not prevent them from holding on to the word of God and believing that they had a mission, that they were called to be a royal priesthood, and that they were called to be a blessing to all of humanity. Brothers and sisters, we too are called. We are called through the body and blood of Christ. We receive love from God the Father in the form of his Son who died for us. And we receive the blessed sacrament which strengthens us in spirit and in wisdom. And therefore, we cannot afford to give in to the passions of our day, to the words of division, and to the pervasive fear that we hear all around us. We are called to something greater, a greater witness and a greater testimony. And so let us on this day of Corpus Christi be prepared to go out into the world and to be faithful to that mission which Christ has given to us, not to add to the curses of humanity, of inflamed political rhetoric or mass media that feeds off of tragedy and division in order to sell copy. But rather, let us interject something new to the equation. The love of Christ and the boldness that overcomes fear so that we can be a sign of God's love for all humanity. May God bless you.